Last night, it was reported that a Chinese destroyer fired a military laser at a U.S. Navy airship. Now, it wasn't a weapon itself, that's my understanding, but it was still reckless and could have caused damage or harm to the people involved. It's just another example of the United States and China butting heads and getting dangerously close to war or some kind of conflict. China has been pressing to gain control of certain parts of the South China Sea, and basically no one agrees they have the right to do this, but the U.S. and China have butted heads in this area several times in the past few years. This is another example of the problem we are facing with the growing threat of China, and it's being ignored by many people in our country and around the world. Now, of course, the European Union has stated one of their goals is to counteract the growth of China. That's why they want to form the union, at least one of the reasons. But in the U.S., for several decades, we've handed over economic power, our manufacturing straight to China to build labs, to build manufacturing plants. And now it's backfiring. There are certain global phenomena happening that I can't talk about, but we'll leave for another video, starting in China, particularly in Wuhan. And now we are seeing that all of this manufacturing we gave away, it's backfiring on us because we can't produce certain supplies we need. More importantly, however, it's not the choices that we made as a country, but the fact that China has been exploiting the United States, infiltrating our universities and stealing our intellectual property. We've been in a major global conflict with the rising superpower that is China in Africa and in South America, in the South China Sea, and now in the United States. Several academics have been arrested. This is the craziest thing. We have had several stories about U.S. professors being arrested and accused of hiding relationships with Chinese universities, all because they want money. The story became pretty big when a Harvard professor, I believe it was Harvard, was arrested and accused of lying to the United States. They accused him of taking hundreds of thousands of dollars from China and and essentially giving away our secrets and our research. China is a growing threat. They have mass camps full of Muslims. They do horrifying things to these people. And we have been sitting around doing nothing for the longest time. If something isn't done, and I don't know what is to be done, we're in serious trouble. Now, of course, Trump is enacting the trade war with tariffs. We've also got the U.S. Department of Justice going after these professors who are in on the take with China, giving away our secrets. The latest story, a U.S. professor is arrested, accused of hiding his relationship with the Chinese university. We have a lot of stories like this unsurprisingly, however, is that House Democrats are accusing the National Institute of Health and the FBI of racially profiling people because they're concerned about espionage. I'm not going to tell you where to draw the line, but I can't say I'm surprised to hear that Democrats are outraged. The FBI would be going after potential spies because national nationality and ethnicity have an overlap. I don't know what to tell you, but let's do this. Let's get started with this story. The latest breaking news from uh, from just last night the professor who was arrested. And this is not the first. There have been a string of academics who have been arrested because the Chinese Communist Party, their government has been infiltrating our universities and stealing our research and our intellectual property. However, before we get started, head over to timcast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are several ways you can give, but the best thing you can do is just share this video. I, this, is, this is an attempt at breaking echo chambers, as I often say, but this this should be fairly... I don't know, uh, bipartisan, I guess. You've got foreign government coming to our universities and stealing from us and people in America agreeing to do it, breaking the law to do it. I'd imagine a lot of people should be concerned about this and I'm hoping they are. This is not another video where I'm going to complain about the political parties. I want to talk about something more serious, an existential threat for our country in general and every single person inside of it. The other thing I'll say is many of you haven't subscribed to this channel. So if you do like this content, want to see more, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, new videos every day at 4 p.m. Let's read the first story from The Hill. They report an associate professor at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, who was receiving funding from NASA, has been arrested and charged by federal authorities with hiding his relationship with a Chinese university. The Justice Department said Thursday in a press release that An Ming Hu was arrested and charged with three counts of wire fraud and three counts of lying to investigators. He is accused of hiding his relationship with the Beijing University of Technology while working with NASA on a project, a violation of federal laws that prevent NASA from providing funding for projects in collaboration with the Chinese government or Chinese university system. It wasn't clear what interest the Beijing University had with whose project or the nature of the project itself. Pages containing information about whose work with UTK 
have been had been deleted from the school's website by Thursday evening. Who allegedly committed fraud by hiding his relationship with a Chinese university while receiving funding from NASA, said Assistant Attorney General John Demers. This is just the latest case involving professors or researchers concealing their affiliations with China from their American employers and the U.S. government. We will not tolerate it. The United States Attorney's Office takes seriously fraudulent conduct that is devised to undermine federally mandated funding restrictions related to China and Chinese authority universities, added U.S. Attorney J. Douglas Overbay in the press release. The University of Tennessee has cooperated with the investigation, and the U.S. Attorney's Office values the university's assistance in this matter. If convicted, who faces up to 20 years in prison and a maximum fine of $250,000 for each of the three wire fraud cases? This is not the first time we have heard of this in recent history, in the past couple of months. And what's alarming to me is that so many people, partic- I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll leave the partisanship out of this to the best of my ability, but many people are ignoring this, downplaying it, or acting like we're doing something wrong for going after this. It was Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and yes, the establishment Republicans before Trump, who were in favor of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. For decades, manufacturing in this country has been extracted. Labor and value from this country has been outsourced to foreign countries, and now we are reaping the backfiring of this practice. When we need supplies, when we needed to order masks from China, from from factories that were owned by American companies, what did the Chinese government say? They said, turn those ships around. We need those resources more. So what is the capability of the United States to produce masks for its own citizens? Should we sit idly by while our ability to be self-sufficient is given away to, to, to foreign countries? And should we sit idly by while they infiltrate our universities and take our research? The problem I see is that too many politicians were enriching themselves. They didn't care about this country. They didn't care about community. They thought about what they can do in the short term to make a ton of money. And this was it. And now we are reaping the rewards. I'm being facetious. It's, it's a net negative. But this is what we get for allowing it to happen for so long. This is a story from February 19th. Harvard professor's arrest raises questions about scientific openness. Really? Really, NPR? Openness? Here was a guy who was essentially giving away our universities, our our research secrets. Funding from the U.S. government was going to these projects, and he was effectively giving them to China without telling the U.S. government and then lying about it. That's a big difference between being open I certainly think academic openness is great. Sharing of knowledge is excellent. Not when it's one sided and favoring a company that can that commits horrifying atrocities. NPR said until late last month, Charles Lieber lived the quiet life of an elite American scientist. His lab at Harvard University researched things like how to meld tiny electronics with the brain. In his spare time, he grew award winning pumpkins in front of his house. And then on January 28th, the FBI came knocking on his door. Now Lieber faces charges of trading knowledge for money and lying about it. Prosecutors allege he set up a lab in China in exchange for hundreds of thousands of dollars in payments from the Chinese government and then denied knowledge of those payments to U.S. investigators. Mind you, this is not the Chinese government. It's the Chinese Communist Party that runs everything. Lieber's attorney, Peter Levitt, declined to talk to NPR about the allegations. But others watching the case say it raises important questions about ethics, scientific openness, and possible racial profiling in an era of geopolitical tension. Quote, this is a big, big case, says Frank Wu, a professor at the University of California, Hastings College of Law, who tracks Chinese espionage cases. This is a case that's all about U.S.-China relations. It's about competition. It's about how science should be done. The Lieber case centers on a Chinese recruitment program called the Thousand Talents Plan. It was started by the Chinese government in 2008, primarily as a way to draw Chinese researchers back to China, according to Michael Lahr, the deputy director of extramural research at the National Institutes of Health. The Chinese government wanted to bring back outstanding scientists to China so as to develop their science and technology. Over time, the project began to recruit Western scientists as well. Researchers were asked to set up labs in China and spend at least part of their time doing work there. In exchange for grants and expenses paid, some relocated relocated to China, but others split their time between their home institutions and a Chinese university. I want you to stop and think about what this means for the future of the world. America is one of the most progressive countries in the history of the planet. 
that has enacted more civil rights law to protect marginalized groups than any other country in the world. And China is, let's just say, overtly bigoted. Recently, there's been a big, con- there, was, there were many controversies related to corporate and, and you know, biz- corporate institutions like the NBA, for instance, and them ponying up to communist China, ignoring their horrifying atrocities because they wanted to make money from that country. China is spying on us. They're spying on our research. They are recruiting our academics and everyone is just giving in because the sweet dollar is worth more than freedom, liberty and progressive causes. And this to me is what's scary. As celebrities and major companies bend the knee to China because they want that sweet Skrilla, you may get that short term gain today. But what's the long term result? China has a camp filled with a million people who are facing atrocities. China is lying about the problems their country is facing. China is extracting our resources, and we've sat by and accepted it because of, without naming names, some of these famous NBA stars who say, oh, we shouldn't badmouth China. You don't want to get someone hurt because they want money. And that's been a problem for too long. You know, you don't have to be a staunch nationalist to realize we should not be supporting a country that does the horrifying things they have done in the past and continue to do to this day. But this is what's really scary. The tacit defense. Oh, but we're just trying to share knowledge and be open. Just like when that video game company, just like when the NBA said, well, but you know, we got customers in China. They censor the news. They violate civil liberties. They are not someone to be praised for any reason. And yet Bernie Sanders actually praised them. That to me is shocking. But there has been a lot going on. American universities are a soft target for Chinese spies, say U.S. intelligence officials. University of Texas professor Bo Mao is the latest defendant in a string of U.S. criminal cases alleging Chinese spying in the academic world. This story from February 2nd. What is happening has been happening for a very, very long time. I don't need to show you every single case, but trust me when I say it has. November 20th, 2019, Chinese infiltration of U.S. labs caught science agencies off guard. China has diverted U.S. government funds to bolster its military and economic aims, a U.S. Senate panel says. The Democrats in the debate called out what China was doing to the Uyghur Muslims. It's about time we stop allowing these things to happen. We put our foot down and stand up to what China is doing. Whether you like the president or not, he's at least trying to do that in some ways with a trade war. Of course, he's been criticized because that's how politics work in this country. I'm not going to talk about the direct results or the plan. I'm just going to say, I don't care who you are, which side of the fence you're on, who, which, which party you support. We have heard criticisms from both Democrats and Republicans that are completely apt, that should, be, that should be paid attention to, and we shouldn't allow this to continue because it is worse than you probably realize. Pompeo warns governors of Chinese infil- uh, warns governors of Chinese infiltration into U.S. It's happening in your state. Let me go back to that first story I was showing you. House Democrats launch probe into NIH and FBI suspecting Chinese Americans of espionage. They're concerned, and I think it's fair. They're concerned that U.S. law enforcement and U- uh, federal agencies are targeting people simply for being Chinese, and I am certainly no fan of that. But I must protest at least a little bit. You do realize the overwhelming majority, like 99.999% of China is Chinese, right? And if we're concerned about Chinese infiltration, we're going to be investigating people who have ties to China. It's not an issue of racial profiling. It's more an issue of national identity. And these are serious issues. Perhaps many of you are globalists. You think it's stupid. Fine. That's fine, too. But China doesn't share that sentiment with you, and they will burn everything to the ground to get what they want. This is the problem with international conflict. Of course, we don't want to go to war. I'm sure China doesn't either. But both sides want their culture to be pervasive and take over the planet so they can get what they want and enrich themselves and empower themselves. There's probably no real hard solution, and this may come to serious military conflict, which is why I started with the video, uh, with, well, I'm sorry, with the story of the lazing of a U.S., uh, what is it, a P-8A? Uh, uh, it's a patrol patrol aircraft, kind of like a 747. Let's read a little bit of the story from Fox News. And then I'm going to show you something pretty, uh, I guess, pretty alarming. It's been going on for a long time. We have stories going back years about this. China's Communist Party has infiltrated various levels of America's infrastructure and is working to destroy the values of the United States, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said during a speech Saturday 
while also warning state governors to be wary of China's infiltration. We can't ignore China's actions and strategic intentions, he said, while addressing the the National Governors Association winter meeting. The Chinese government has been methodical in the way it's analyzed our system. It's assessed our vulnerabilities, and it's decided to exploit our freedoms to get an advantage over us at the federal level, the state level, and the local level. Competition with China is happening. It's happening in your state. In fact, I'd be surprised if most of you in the audience had not been lobbied by the Chinese Communist Party directly. He said groups loyal to Communist China are operating out in the open in Virginia, Minnesota, Florida, and dozens of other states all around the country. Other Chinese groups, however, practice their nefarious actions in the shadows in an attempt to exercise influence over U.S. citizens and lawmakers. Pompeo cited a number, I'm sorry, Pompeo cited a letter from a diplomat at the Chinese consul in New York to the speaker of an unnamed state legislature advising that U.S. officials refrain from independent interaction with Taiwan. You add a diplomat from China assigned here to the United States, a representative of the Chinese Communist Party in New York City sending a letter urging that an American elected official shouldn't exercise his right to freedom of speech. And guess what? We've already seen Americans give up their right or argue against freedom of speech because China said so as they gain power and press militaristically against us. As they make more money stealing our manufacturing and our intellectual property, they gain influence over our personalities. They buy them out. They, ta- they, they gain influence in our tech companies. They censor our information. We are not winning this fight right now. That's what's particularly scary. And they are in our universities. Now, a lot of people like to say that the infiltration is potentially giving, uh, uh, helping with the rise of this woke far left ideology. And I don't think that's necessarily fair or accurate. There was a study that was done recently showing a correlation between freedom, gen, uh, uh, gender levels, and the amount of social justice pairing in university. So I don't want to rehash or, or hash this whole debate over social justice. Suffice it to say that there are other factors at play. And it may actually be that we, we are developing vulnerabilities because we are too free and too accepting. Like the House Democrats who want to probe into the NIH and FBI over racial profiling. Unfortunately, I can respect what I, 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 I let, let, let me start over. I can respect what they're doing. But unfortunately, we are at a between a rock and a hard place when dealing with civil liberties. I would never give up my freedom for a little bit of security, but that means we will be vulnerable to exploitation by foreign agents. And that's why we do want some security. I would never give up total liberty, but there is a line. When you, when you, when you recognize you do need law enforcement, you do need the FBI to go after these spies, this infiltration, you recognize that some people will have to deal with these issues. And there's no real easy way to draw the line between how much freedom and how much security. But I definitely err on the side of freedom. It's what makes this country great. uh, It's what makes makes this country great and worth fighting for. And that's why I am concerned about the expansion of China, their infiltration, their exploitation of our goodwill. Because if they keep growing and we ignore this, if they take our manufacturing base, if they steal our IP, if they infiltrate our schools, if they buy out our celebrities, if they buy out our researchers then their authoritarian culture dominates where you have no rights and you must bend the machine to the Borg, the machine that says be a part of the system and give into it and no rights for you. That to me is truly terrifying. The secretary said this isn't an uncommon event and that Chinese officials based in the U.S. are actively seeking to sow seeds of chaos at the state and local level, specifically in the realm of education on college uh, education on college campuses and K through 12 classrooms. Maybe some of you have heard about the time when the Chinese consulate paid the UC San Diego students to protest the Dalai Lama. It shows depth. It shows systemization. It shows intent. He added Chinese Communist Party officials, too, are cultivating relationships with county school boards and local politicians, often through what are known as sister city programs. The competition is well underway. Pompeo also spoke about China's campaign to recruit U.S. scientists and academics to share vital secrets in exchange for monetary gain through their Thousand Talents plan, a campaign that has already targeted scientists and professors on campuses such as Virginia Tech and Harvard and triggered investigations by the Department of Justice. Some of these people who received this money lied about it to the federal government. And that that to me is what's really scary. Allegiance for sale. These people who gave in don't care about our country or rights or civil rights or civil liberties or freedoms. 
They care about getting money for themselves so they can live a short and happy life and let everything else burn down around them. I, for one, think America has done a very, very great job of expanding freedom and civil liberties, civil rights, and that's something we should protect. And what's happening right now is not that. There are people who only care about themselves exploiting the system like these professors who would lie. It's been going on for quite some time. Check this out. This is from 2018 Politico. Coordinate the efforts of overseas and domestic propaganda and further create a favorable international environment for us. Chinese minister of propaganda Liu Yunshan exhorted his compatriots in a 2010 People's Daily article. With regard to key issues that influence our sovereignty and safety, we should actively carry out intentional propaganda battles against issuers such as Tibet, Xinjiang, Taiwan, human rights, and Falun Gong. We should do well in establishing and operating overseas cultural centers and Confucius Institutes. This story from Politico magazine, how China infiltrated U.S. classrooms. If you think it's bad now, what do you think would happen if we sat around and did nothing? It would get worse. It's kind of scary that this threat and this problem has grown within our borders and within our ranks, and no one did anything about it. And now we can see the real ramifications. We are seeing our own secrets and research being given away, our country being extracted, both from the intellectual property to the hard manufacturing. How much longer could our country go on like this? How many people actually care? Very few. Because you have people advocating for open borders to give away our benefits and our community's resources to people who aren't even citizens. And perhaps it's Chinese propaganda. I don't know. But we are being eaten alive from the inside out and something has to be done about it. I don't know what all of what what the answers are. But I can tell you that the stories about this are rather scary. This story just from a few hours ago, former Google CEO Eric Schmidt says China could supplant Silicon Valley as the world's tech powerhouse unless the U.S. government steps in? Well, perhaps that's the answer. But as China gains more and more power and begins to dominate, we will lose our position. Now, I don't think America is morally justified in being the world's police, not for the most part. In some circumstances, we can have a discussion about it. But I do think America is the best nation on the planet for one simple reason, a constitution guaranteeing civil rights, civil liberties, And though it wasn't perfect when it was created, we have done a tremendous job of improving upon this throughout history. Now, we still have a long ways to go, but we are doing better than most. We're a powerful, wealthy nation that does a really good job. We've reduced our carbon emissions better than most other countries. Maybe, maybe Maybe not every single one, but China is contributing to global warming more than anyone else, China and India. We can talk about the problems from the environment to civil rights to the oppression of minorities like they're doing in those camps. And America is several orders of magnitude better. If you are on the left and you find yourself worried about marginalized groups, then you should be focused on the threat of China as well. If you're a conservative concerned about the loss of manufacturing, you should be paying attention to China as well. Of course, Trump supporters are very focused on on, on the threat of China and the growing problems. Perhaps many people on the left should focus on this just the same. Now, back to the first story. And the last thing I'll say to the Democrats who are launching this probe, I think it's a good thing. I think we survive as a country and we do well in terms of protecting protecting civil liberties, because even though we will investigate potential espionage, we will still make sure it is being done right. We do not want law enforcement to go off and just go after whoever they want. We want accountability. It's what makes us better than China. And, these, and some other countries. But mark my words, we are looking at a serious threat and we are actively dealing with espionage, cyber war, and now potentially, you know, butting heads in international waters as China expands its influence and builds military bases against international law. I don't know where we'll go from here, but I just think it was important to bring up and talk about what's currently happening in our universities. If you're somebody who's going to send your kids or has kids in universities, pay attention to this stuff because they are spreading their propaganda in their own words. In 2018, it was reported that is their goal. Where it brings us, I don't know, but I think we need to to be on guard. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all next time.